So if you've been wanting to up your DJI Action 3 photo game, today's video is for you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to capture some pretty incredible long exposure photography using your DJI Osmo Action 3. Now, in order to capture those long exposure photos, you need a couple things. You need some type of tripod. I use just one of these little Ulanzi octopus tripods. It doesn't have to be a small one. You can use a full-size tripod if you want to, but it does not have to be anything fancy. It just has to be something that can keep your camera completely still while you're snapping the photo. Because one of the keys with long exposure photography is it captures that blur of whatever's moving in your photo. Usually it's gonna be water moving, like a waterfall, a stream, the ocean, anything like that. That's a key with long exposure photography. You want to have something that's moving in your photo to really make it stand out from something that's stationary. So in addition to the tripod, you also just need your Osmo Action 3 with the magnetic mount. And then you just need some type of Action 3 mount where you can connect it to your tripod. I use a little $10 metal mount because it holds up well. I'll link to that below. It works well with that. And I find that I can use it over and over without damaging it. Some of them that I have, I've owned for more than five years and I've used them hundreds of times and they're still holding up well. So I definitely recommend those metal mounts. They're one of my favorite accessories. And then the third thing you need is you need an ND1000 filter. So the ND filters that I use are these right here from Freewell. And the ND1000 is part of this pack of six here, but Freewell does also offer the ND1000 standalone filter. So if you only wanna buy that filter and you don't want any of the rest of these, you can also buy that as well. I'll link to this set that I own, as well as the standalone in the description below, so you can check it out. So those are the three things you need for long exposure photography in the Action 3. You need a tripod, you need your Action 3 mounted on the tripod, and then you need the ND1000 filter with either this set or standalone. So once you have those tools, there are just a few key settings that you need to program into your Action 3 in order to get really good long exposure photography. Speaking of getting great results from something small, let me introduce you to the sponsor for today's video. The sponsor for today's video is Exter. If you haven't heard of Exter before, Exter makes some incredible wallets. Now this one right here is the Exter aluminum card holder. This is super slim, fits easily in the palm of the hand, with the click of a button, all your cards pop up. In addition, I love it that these wallets have the RFID protection built in. And the best part about this aluminum card holder is despite its thin, small size, it can hold up to 15 cards. When I want a little bit classier wallet for going out in the town, I bring along my extra Parliament wallet right here. It doesn't take up a lot of space, but it holds exactly what I need it to. Parliament wallet holds up to 12 cards. This wallet also blocks RFID theft. If you click my exclusive link in the description below, you'll receive up to 25% off from Exter. So thanks again to Exter for sponsoring this video today. Before I go through those settings, let's talk about how to remove the lens cap from the Action 3 and how to put the ND1000 filter on. So I'm gonna turn it sideways here so I can show you. All you have to do is take it here and turn it counterclockwise. It's on a thread here and it easily removes. Just hang on to it while you turn it. That's all you have to do. It's gonna look like this underneath. Now we're gonna put the ND1000 filter on it. It's gonna be the same size as a lens cap and it's going to look very dark. All we have to do to put this filter on is we're gonna put it on here and we're gonna thread it clockwise. There should be very little resistance there. It should go on quite easily. If there's a lot of resistance, just try to re-thread it to make sure. All you wanna do is just keep turning it until it gets tight. You don't have to use Gorilla Force on there, but just make sure it's on tight so it's not gonna fall off on you. That's all you have to do with putting the lens on. So next, let's talk about the settings that you need to change on your camera in order to get really nice long exposure photography. First thing we need to do is power that camera on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we're in photo mode. We're gonna click on photo. And first thing we wanna do is we wanna drag up from the bottom. And for this, I recommend having the aspect ratio of four by three. It's gonna give you that nice photo aspect ratio. And it's also gonna give you the ability to crop a little bit later on if you desire to do so. 
And then down here for the countdown, I recommend setting this to two or three seconds. And the reason for that is if you're pressing the button on the camera to take the photo, you want the camera to have time to stop moving a little bit before it starts capturing the photo. Otherwise, the end result is probably not going to look very good. So once you've set those settings, you wanna swipe back down. Then over here on the right, you wanna click on this. And here's where our key settings are to get really nice long exposure photography. First thing you need to do is exposure. You need to set it to manual here. That is really important. You don't want anything auto on this. Otherwise it will probably mess up your photo and not give you good results. Next thing you wanna do is over here for ISO, you want to drag this to just 100. You don't want it on any of the ranges, you want it at static 100 because that's going to give you the very best results. It's also going to allow the camera to go to a longer shutter speed, which is really the key with getting great long exposure photography. Now over here on the left is the shutter speed settings. And what you set this to is going to largely depend on the daylight that you're working with. So when you first go to this setting, it's probably gonna have something up here with the one over something. And you are not gonna to wanna to choose any of those. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to swipe up and you're gonna to have to go for a while here. You're gonna to wanna to go down here until you get at least to two. And what that two means is that two means two seconds. So what that two seconds is going to do is it's going to keep the shutter on your camera open for two seconds. So your action three is going to capture two seconds in that single instance of the shutter being open. And what's going to happen is anything that moves during those two seconds is going to show as blur in your photo. Now two seconds is probably going to be what you have to work with if it's a really bright day out wherever you're filming. Anything longer than two seconds is probably going to wash out everything in the photo. It's going to massively overexpose it. Two seconds is a good starting point, but if you're outside on an overcast day, or if you're in the shade, or if you're close to sunrise or sunset, you can get away with a longer shutter speed. So when I was doing these test photos, it was a cloudy, snowy day, and I tried five seconds. Five seconds was fine. Uh, there was no overexposure. If anything, it was slightly underexposed. And underexposure is fine because as you'll see in a moment, we're working with raw photos and a lot of those details will still be captured with underexposure and we can bring them out later on. So five seconds worked great. And I went all the way up to 10 seconds and 10 seconds still worked great because it was an overcast snowy day. Now there have been instances where I've been able to go to 15 and 20 seconds as well but usually you're not going to be able to go over that 15 or 20 seconds unless you're in a really dark place, but it can't be so dark that it's nighttime because with this ND1000 filter, it does filter out a lot of light. It's sunglasses for your action three. That's essentially what this ND filter is. And it filters out so much light that if you're doing this in the darkness, it's going to be too much. It's not going to be able to capture enough detail in that instance. So after we've set our shutter speed to at least two seconds, and no more than five initially. We're gonna click confirm. Then we're gonna go over here to white balance and white balance, you can let it do auto. Auto is fine for that since it is a static photo. You can always adjust that later on when editing, that's not a big deal. So we're gonna click confirm there. For the field of view, you're gonna have the option of standard de-warp or wide. I recommend sticking with wide. Wide is going to give you the most in your scene and again, you have the ability to fix that lens profile later on if you want to, if there's any distortion you want to remove when editing. And you also are going to capture more of your scene. So I recommend wide because you can always crop in your scene if you want to. And then the last setting here that we need to change, but it's really important is format. So you have the format option of JPEG or RAW. I highly recommend doing RAW here unless you absolutely do not want to edit later on. But if you do JPEG, you're missing out on a lot of details and the ability to really make that photo look nice. So I do recommend using RAW. My preferred program to edit photos in is Adobe Lightroom. I love Lightroom, it's great. If you don't already have Lightroom or you don't want to pay for it, you can use some other programs to edit that are free. RAW Therapy is one of them. There are some others out there as well. 
but I highly recommend selecting raw here. It's going to give you the best results. So that is it for the settings that you need to change on the Action 3. Once you've plugged in those settings, you are good to go. So after you've captured your long exposure photography, it's time to edit the photos. So I'm gonna do a quick run through on how to edit the photos. Now the important thing to know about the raw files is those can only be edited on a computer. Your phone will not allow you to edit those on there, at least not with the DJI Mimo app. Now the raw photos, if you want to edit them on your phone, you will have to use an app that allows you to edit DNG files. There are some apps out there. I have used Lightroom on my phone to edit those photos and it does work for that. But for today's demonstration of editing, I'm going to use my computer so that you can see how I edit using Lightroom on there. So on the computer, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna get those raw files copied over. I have copied them all right here and they are ready for us to edit. So next thing we wanna do is we wanna open Adobe Lightroom. Once Lightroom's open, we're gonna import these photos. So I'm gonna go up here to File, Import Photos and Videos. And I'm going to navigate to where they're located. And now that they're imported, I'm going to pick one to edit. Number two had a little bit of a snowflake going across it, so I'm gonna skip that one for editing. But number three looks pretty good here to start with. So right away, first step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click Auto under Tone Control. Auto does a really good job. Like right away, that photo looks a lot better. It brought up the exposure a little bit like it needed to be. Looks really good. That water looks fabulous. And then the stationary objects have a lot of detail here as well that look really nice. So next I'm gonna go over here to develop and I'm gonna fine tune this. So a lot of the times highlights, I need to bring those down a little bit further. So highlights had already brought them down to negative 73. But if I drag it all the way down toward negative 100, You'll see up here, it brings out some better details in the sky with the clouds, but it doesn't at the same time mess up anything down here. Highlights still look pretty good there. So I'm gonna bring those all the way down. Shadows, it brought them up to plus 57. We may wanna bump this just a little bit higher, but not too much. So I'm gonna bring that up to about 91 right there. I like how that looks. Whites, I'm gonna bring those up just a little bit more here. And blacks, it took it down to negative 27. I'm gonna go a little bit further down on those. By the way, I really like how the water color got captured. The Action 3 did a fabulous job capturing these colors. It looks really good, especially in raw where it's that flat profile to begin with. We can bring out some of those colors in a moment, but I just wanted to mention that. Now the vibrance by default, it took it up to plus 20. I'm actually gonna take that back to zero for now. And saturation, I'm gonna take back to zero as well because I want to fine tune these colors. Clarity, I'm gonna bring up to about plus 20. I kinda like that there, it makes everything pop a little bit more. Speaking of popping, contrast, we're gonna bring that up a little bit as well. Not too much, but we're gonna bring that up to about plus 14 there. So for the saturation, we're gonna bring up some of the colors. First of all, I wanna bring up some of the orange. The orange you're gonna mostly see in these leaves down here, and then a little bit in the woods but I want the orange to contrast with the blue here. Those colors are gonna look really nice next to each other. Yellows we can also bring up just a little bit. Green, we're gonna bring that up kind of high. because so I want the green from these small trees up here and this one down here to kind of pop, as well as some of the moss over here in this rock. Now the blues we wanna bring up quite a bit. So we're gonna bring up the aqua. The aqua really comes out in the water here. Love how that looks. Then the blue itself, we're gonna bring up a little bit more as well. So I kind of like that right there. Purples, we can bring up a little bit, but there's not gonna be a lot of purple going on in this photo. The red would be the same deal. Not really a lot of red, if any, to bring up. I really like that right there. And by the way, not only does the water in the waterfall have that nice long exposure look to it, but the water down here in the stream does as well. Really like how that looks. And that's pretty much all you have to do. If you wanna mess with your curves down here, you can do that as well. That's not necessary to do, but you could do that if you really want to fine tune it. But oftentimes you could get a great edit just with the settings that I went through right there. Then of course, at that point, we wanna click export. And when you export, I'm gonna put it in a subfolder. I'm gonna call it export. 
Generally, I like to put it in the same folder as the original photo. I feel like that's the best place to put it. And quality, make sure that's all the way to 100. We had JPEG for the format and color space sRGB. For the resolution, I generally recommend about 200 pixels per inch. I think that usually looks pretty good there. And then down here for the metadata, you can select what you want. I usually do copyright only. Then I'm gonna click export. So let's do one more of these photos. Uh, let me look at these here, see which one I wanna edit. So I really like how all of these look. I think this one is probably the, the most interesting one here to edit. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to library, click auto again. It's gonna do the auto settings right there. I really love the appearance of this water and how you can see the rocks through it. I just think that looks really cool. I like these rocks sticking up out of the water down here and these ones I'm standing on. I love that contrast of the motion against the stationary. So we're gonna go over to develop and we're gonna do some fine tuning again. Highlights I'm gonna bring down a little bit here. We don't have as much detail in the sky to pick up here, so we don't need to bring it down to 100 if we don't want to. Shadows, I might bring those up a little bit more here. But I think I like it right about there in the 50s. Whites, I'm gonna bring that up just a little. And blacks, I'm gonna bring that down a little. Contrast, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit more. I like it right about there at 39. I'm gonna put vibrance and saturation back to their defaults. Gonna bring up clarity just a little bit. Do about 18 there. And then let's do some colors again. Uh, so I wanna bring up orange quite a bit, yellow quite a bit. Bring up some green. Uh, the green, I don't like bringing it up too much. As you can see, it kind of looks bad there but I want some of the green from under the water there, the moss on those rocks. I think that looks pretty cool. Aqua, we wanna bring that up quite a bit to bring out those colors in the water. Blue, I'll do as well. Purple, I don't need to bring it up a whole lot here. It's not really gonna benefit as much in this scene, but I think I wanna bring green up just a little bit further to kind of get the trees and the, the moss here on the side, but without overdoing it too much on the water. For this photo, I wanna bring a little bit of sharpness up as well. So we're gonna go down here to the detail tab and I'm gonna drag this up just a little bit. And the radius, I'm gonna drag up here a little bit as well. Detail, also a little bit. And we'll bump the amount just a little bit further. We don't wanna over sharpen anything to have it look bad, but Adding the sharpness here really makes these rocks pop and the stick right here and a few other objects. So I really like that with the contrast of the water. Looks really good. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export this photo and we're gonna click export here. It's gonna maintain all the defaults that we set for the other photo. So that is how you capture and edit a long exposure photo using the DJI Osmo Action 3. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful, and I hope you have a lot of fun with your Action 3 capturing incredible long exposure photography.